part two of my video series from an ignorant standpoint of me looking up the stats that are hard to find sometimes for no good reason for Rust the video game. If you're not aware of it, it's basically a survival simulator. And if you do it in tier zero gatherer only mode, like I explained in a previous video, it, it's it's bordering on being accurate. It also creates an economy of scale and an economy simulator, but that's another subject for another video I probably shouldn't do. Let's get into the nitty and or gritty. You can walk around and collect rocks off the ground and stumps off the ground and plants off the ground to make cloth, to eat, to combine together to make things, to make housing, to not die, to stay warm, to make a fire, literally including slightly but not quite smelting metal over a fire. None of this requiring any tier one, two, three, or whatever more benches or types of other processes, nor any interaction with anybody if you really didn't want to. Which means you could really use this as a solo activity without interaction if you push it. And you should, ought to, maybe need to, if you play the game, teach yourself how to do all of this tier zero before you even touch tier one, which involves a bench. Let's discuss some basics. Making stone and wood items. I covered in the previous video, pick up and gather things and just use them straightforward that stage to what you end up with. No combining of anything. You end up with water, food, the ability to store them, uh, a building. Uh, you can make it ridiculously fast as long as you hide it in the weeds or something, and then upgrade it to stone, which makes it to where somebody can't burn it down, and a bunch of other things I didn't even cover. I have only 15 minutes per video because I deliberately limit it that way, so it's easier for you to download and watch. But let's talk about wooden arrows. How many stumps and how many rocks do you need to make it? Well, a stump provides 50 wood units, and a rock, any rock, will provide just about any rock, will provide 50 units of stone. So let's go. Wooden arrow, 10 units of stone, 25 units of wood, and it's player made, meaning known by default, as in you, you, you don't need to have anything other than the materials at hand. 200 wood units and 50 cloth units to make a bow. That's four stumps, five hemp plants, and the other one was a stump and a rock to make two arrows or more. They don't actually specify consistently how many arrows you get out of each. Someone will correct me on this. That would be normal. But again, subject to change. Every single thing they do keeps changing. I understand balancing a game so you don't end up with people having a miserable experience more than needed, but to make a spear is 300 units of wood. That's six stumps. That makes sense. Well, no, it's for cutting down a tree and using it. But that's the equivalent to picking up stumps. Again, you have to work to cut down a tree and you have to work to smash a stone node. Because if you're not aware of it, the stone node is literally not 1,000 units of stone and the tree isn't 1,000 units of wood. It's that they're both one metric ton each because it's a one metric ton dead tree, which you should do the dead trees first, by the way, and one metric ton stone. Literally, the scale matches. I checked. They, they did base it on that, basically. What about a stone spear? That's a stone tip spear. Well, that requires 20 stone and 300 wood. That's six stumps and a rock or less. You, can, you, you, you do the math. This is like the hot dogs versus hot dog buns math, but let's move on. Now, what could you use instead of those? You can use those to do all sorts of things, but let's talk about um, a hatchet or pickaxe that's made with stone. 200 wood, 100 stone. They're consistent. It's just the shape. The hatchet for cutting down a tree and the pickaxe for smashing stone. Don't use them across genres. That's four stumps and two rocks for each. If you can find a lot of rocks and a lot of stumps, you don't need to do this, right? Now, you could also go to a red toolbox and find a metal hatchet, 8% chance, and a salvage axe for 2% chance. Or immediately make what you need out of stone and wood. And again, you just find it. And com this is combining them together. The others were straightforward. You just start with wood and make it something. If you found stone, you made something. But these are combinings. You could find a salvage pickaxe, ice axe. You could find a jackhammer. 
you could use the beach rock. What's the yield in stone? Let's do that quickly. 1,000 stone per ore node, whether it contains metals or not, whether or not you want to build a building out of it or are allowed to. That's 375 if you use the beach rock. Now that's the total of just picking up 20 scattered rocks that are just pickups that are silent. People get killed while harvesting stone nodes. Same thing with trees. You chop down a tree, almost finish chopping down a half dozen of them. Make it to where the last swing is done on each of them in rapid succession so you collect the wood and run the hell away. Because that's when you're going to get attacked because you're too busy harvesting. Or on the run, picking up stumps, if they're plentiful or at, at all available, and picking up rocks. Start with twig. When you get it finalized in shape, slap locks on everything and then upgrade everything to wood as fast as possible. That should be a training activity. Now, picking up random stuff, again, it's straightforward. Finding them in, uh, in toolboxes and such in the levels. Okay, uh, that's understood. Pretty much easy. There we go. But make these things anyway because they're good backup equipment, right? How much time do you are you are, are you doing a speed run uh, on doing this survival game? Here we go. The yield use case for wood for a salvaged axe versus the beach rocks versus a hatchet, a metal hatchet. 50 wood per dead stump is their standard. So how many stumps worth? 150 wood for small driftwood pile. 75 is what you get if you use the rock. And 129 is what you get if you use the hatchet, the, the metal one. Or is that the stone one? Are they similar? Got to look that up. And basically, there are three stumps worth. The stumps are silent, and you can do it while running and avoid being shot instead of jumping back and forth while you're smashing a wood tree or whatever. Next, 250 wood per log versus 125 for using your rock and 209 for... You get the idea. That's five stumps worth again. Once you get to seven stumps, I'd understand not being able to find them in a string. 750 wood. Large driftwood pile. And a dead tree is 1,000 wood per dead tree takes just as long as a thousand wood, not a dead tree. And it does, when you remove it, it doesn't make it easier for you to be found, like cutting down a live tree removes a bunch of cover. That's 20 stumps worth. Again, if you find 20 stumps in a row, you don't have to harvest a tree. I'm not trying to be eco-friendly. It's a video game. It doesn't matter. Now, as we've gone through this, as I've gone through this video and the previous one, the presumption is here, I do things by like a lot of people do, a tier list. Tier zero is much more attractive. You're not making as much noise. You're wearing the burlap kit, which makes you hard to see. It reduces your recognizability if someone isn't, for some reason, looking at the little thing over your head that says your name is WAPTEC. You're inoffensive. You can keep depositing, depoting your stuff into a wood box you made from stuff you picked up. You literally make very little noise very little attention called to you, and you have very little to lose, and a lot of the stuff, depending on your server that you're, you're on, will respawn immediately. Short break to reality. When teaching people to survive, I tell them to stop being idealists and do what's necessary. I love little squirrels. They're my favorite little friends in the, in the forest. I love little baby squirrels. I get to pet them once in a while. It's a wonderful thing. But if I'm starving, am I going to just eat a bunch of plant fiber that my body doesn't digest well enough? I have a, I, it's a genetic predisposition in some of us, like lactose intolerance. I can't eat some foods, and I can't find out which vegetables or plants in an area are good for me because I'll get sick and die from dehydration in the process. I'm going to go fishing. Fishing trap. Again, something you make from hunks of wood that you picked up and just make a fishing trap. But you get the idea. Oh, wait a minute, it requires rope that you're not supposed to be able to make from hemp for some reason. That's literally why people have hemp. But anyway, let's, let's not complain about the devs. They already know they're idiots. We all know that, right? But, or maybe that's not how it's made. I forgot to look it up. But the point is, what level of effort do you put in? Passively collecting sticks and making a fire versus making a barbecue Smashing a bunch of stone nodes versus picking up rocks and then piling them up in a straight line to make a wall? The game almost screams, do it the lazy way so you have a higher survival rate, 
and you're less of a, of a, tr a problem for people. When I taught people to be survivalists, one of the things I taught them is, if you're thinking immediately of getting guns and starting a war with someone, you are going to be harvested, which is what you see in the game Rust. People not only take people out, they chop them up to get animal fat to go cook some, you know, cook scrap. I don't know what kind of life lesson you're not getting by watching that video game activity you just were involved in if you play this game. But seriously, survivalism isn't about destroying your opponent. It's about not having one. Let's move on. But yeah, dead trees are a better shot and stone nodes versus just picking up rocks. And again, just make a wood and stone tool set immediately because it doesn't require a tier or anything and it doesn't require you to do any pickups. And this keeps you away from where everybody seems to get shot in the game. Picking up stuff from toolkits and, and scrap piles and, and stone nodes and wood trees. If you're not doing that, if you're just running along picking up stuff and nobody even notices what you're doing, they're not going to kill you as easily. Safe zones, monuments, outpost, bandit camp, etc. May have a workbench level one, so you don't need to build one. Research table, again, for doing duplicates, duplicating things. The repair bench, the fix-it bench, uh, the barbecue, so you can do all the wood stuff if you want to, do, do, do cooking. A small oil refining, a small water catcher, so you can just get water if it's not available. Vending machines to buy everything from all the scrap you picked up passively, because you can just passively pick this stuff up. You don't have to smash things, make a bunch of noise, and have to sit there working at it. Do everything quick, grab and run. And a recycler to process everything into what you can use in the vending machines to get more stuff. Versus deliberately doing PvP because you were trying to get rocks and stump, but you decided to cut down one big tree after another or smash a bunch of stone. Let them do the hard way. I recommend being a little weasel. Survivalist, weasel, same thing. But here we go. Whether it's five to eight scrap from a crepe or... 99 plus scrap from a supply drop. 100, uh, 1,200 scrap or so buys a workbench level 2 on some servers. 100 scrap buys 2,000 2, stone or 5,000 wood or 1,000 frags. For scrap that you pick up, you can get away with getting the equivalent to smashing two stone nodes or five uh, big trees or grabbing frags for forever that would take forever to get from crates and stuff. 100 scrap gets 1,000 frags, depending on the server. What do you use this for? Well, again, the stone and wood and scrap are used to make some of these things. Like, you can use 15, uh, 150 frags makes a metal sheet door, fragments. 200 frags, fragments, metal fragments, makes a sheet metal double door. Scrap can be converted to frags by a 10 to 1 ratio, again, on some servers. Scrap is worth getting. And you can make some things into other things by using the recycler, or even just using a little fire. Or using, again, the barbecue at one of the outposts, or a workbench one that's there. And you can go from there also using workbench one to build workbench two. And that to make three. Uh, you can pick up and put away Workbench 1 and 2 in a box, any box apparently, including one you can just make out of random stuff you found. Workbench 3, you need to leave where it is, otherwise you have to keep repairing it. You can get and or build the repair bench and the research table to do virtually everything after that. But they all require scrap, frag, blah, blah, blah. And that list will be down below in the description. You can research blueprints or just make what you just need or not progress and escalate and PvP and raid and whatever, and just passively go pick up stuff. Because that should be tier zero. Do you need a drop box? Do you need one of the coffins? Do you need a large wood box at all? And again, you can just buy them instead of putting in the effort and time, and you could eliminate most of the farming behavior. Do you really need to use the large wood boxes when you can pack the smaller boxes with slightly less capacity but slightly better efficiency and not have to wrestle everything in position, including your TC? So, what's the end run on all this video? Not much of anything, but again, this is a survival and economy simulator. Should we treat it as a survival simulator for survival?
Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck.